Are we good? Are we live? Hello. Hello, Hi. everyone. I'm Roy. This is Daisy. It's not Val today. So um, we were going to talk about doing lead cane work. And so Val thought she could have the day off because she doesn't do lead. So she, so she's not here. So, but it's Daisy and Roy. And um, we're going to talk about lead cane. So I'm not really the lead cane person around here. I, one of my, I can do it. It's not my favorite. I, I'm more of a copper foil guy. But Daisy... Yeah is really good at lead cane. So I saw her working on this project and I was like, oh, this should, she'd be perfect for this. And so I convinced her into coming live with us today. So I had to drag her in front oh, of the camera, but. How nice of you. Yeah, that's me, right? Nice. So uh, this is a really nice uh, panel that um, Daisy has started. And uh, I think we're gonna, you're gonna talk about some of the, the beginning and how you cut the lead and do all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Sure you are. So um, if you're not familiar with stained glass, there's a couple of different ways of constructing stained glass panels. Um, copper foil is one, or sometimes it's referred to as the Tiffany method. And I'm sure we probably have some videos on that, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Kaylee, so probably in our video section or in our YouTube channel, you can find some copper foil stuff. But um, people have been asking us for a while to do some lead came, and our um, lead came instructor is not always around, our normal lead came instructor. And then, like I mentioned before, Val and I don't really do lead, so... Um, we wrote Daisy to come in here and show you how she does lead. So um, you can see the setup here. We have this board. So I think it's probably important really to start with something like this, right, as a, to yeah. uh, a start assembling. Yeah, it's nice to have a nice square corner to start with um, to kind of build off of. So you can kind of see that I've got my um, border came here, and I'm just kind of working that way <laughs> so I can make sure that everything fits nice and tight and I'm not trying to like start in the middle and work my way out because then things will grow and not be quite the right shape and not fit together quite right yeah a little different than how we sometimes approach copper foil you know copper foil some you just kind of can work for most part almost <laughs> anywhere oops <laughs> And, but uh, lead came real important to start here. So this is a lead board. Sometimes they just refer to it as that. Not, not something that we saw here, but pretty easy to make. Um, you know, this is just a piece of OSB board with just like a little one by two strip of, of wood on the edges, right? You just want to make sure you got a nice, uh, as Daisy pointed out, a nice um, square corner here to start with. And you do start with the zinc. If you're not familiar with the zinc, let me show you what this looks like. So this is an adjustable U zinc. Uh, you can see where the glass doesn't sit all the way to the back of the cane, so we have to kind of compensate for that when we're doing our design. And so we have a couple of pieces, like Daisy said, starting there, to, and then everything kind of slides into that as you get started. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, I don't know. <laughs> all right, so I see that, like, like I said, normally we, we start here in the corner, and you can see Daisy has done that, but then she's kind of worked up along this side as she's just doing the design. I'm sure some of that's just a... A, a conscious sort of maybe not even a conscious choice right it's just yeah. like oh you kind of get the flow of the piece going well with this one it kind of made sense um because i have this uh like rounded portion at the bottom and it all of my lead kind of changes angles so i wanted to make sure that this kind of side went down as far as i wanted and was correct and then i could kind of work my way to the other side but I am uh, kind of have the round part cut out but I think I'm gonna start going this way um, and these pieces are so long it just kind of works <laughs> so you so we have some lead already here on the table right that some that you're using and cutting as you go yeah. and so it's already been stretched right I yeah. mean so one of the things we have to do with lead is we you have to stretch it it's a little flexible when you first get it and so uh, we didn't bring in the, basically there's a vise, right? There's a small vise that, that you can just screw to a table, like to a workbench or something. And then the lead fits into the one end. And then you can pull by hand on the, on the lead just to kind of straight, straighten it out, right? Mm -hmm. Mainly we're stiffening it and yep. then also straightening it. Yeah, like this is stretched so I can bend it and it's going to stay. If this wasn't stretched, it would on its own just kind of, over. Yeah, just definitely on its end. And then shown the end, well, anyways, that was in the vise, right? Just for the fun of it. So this end was the end that was in the vise. You can see where it's kind of got pinched a bit. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're not going to use that part, but... Um, okay. <laughs> and then we have these... Um, 
Do we have the lead cane stretcher? Was we that? do. Yeah. Yes. So don't we also. <laughs> coming in. Yeah, we got one coming into it that's a, a little fancier. So uh, if you don't want to just put it in a vise and pull on one end, we have a, a device that you can put it in on both ends and then pull a handle and it just stretches a little bit. So you don't need to really stretch the lead like crazy, right? You just yep. got to just a little bit so that it gets a little stiffer. Um, yeah. You kind of can feel it and see it. Um, it'll straighten out quite a bit. Um, so if you have any twists or anything, uh, stretching your lead will kind of pull those out and straighten everything. Um, and you'll see that it kind of gets a little more rigid. So. Yeah, I know like if you purchase lead from <laughs> us, we sometimes roll it uh, just because it's easier to ship because um, the lead comes in six and the, so does the zinc comes in a six foot length. And so we can put it in a box or when it's a smaller amount of lead, a lot of times we'll roll it. So I know sometimes people are like, oh, it's all rolled out, but you're going to stretch it anyways, right? And then yeah. so uh, that'll, that'll straighten it right out. And because it is so floppy when it's not stretched, rolling it kind of makes it easier to transport it and prevents it from getting so twisted that you just kind of have to trash it because oh, um, yep. that can happen. So. Good point. So the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick was the size of the lead, right? So, yep. so the lead, lead comes in different sizes, but what are, we, you know, what are we mainly talking about when they talk about the size of it? So when we talk about the size, we're talking about the face of it. So this is what you see. A lot of people think it's this channel that is right here that the glass sits in, but that is going to be pretty much the same for all the lead, um, no matter what. So that this glass is a little thick. So that is always going to fit in there, no matter what the size the face is, because the channel is going to be the same. So this, I believe, is. 530 seconds lead, so not quite like 730 <clears throat> seconds, which I think is what uh, we kind of consider standard. But yeah, so 530 seconds yeah. is a little bit narrower, right? So yeah. a lot of it just depends like, on personal preference. Yep. Wouldn't when, when you say like how the face of the game? I mean, obviously, if it was wider, then, these, then all your lead lines look bolder. They mm -hmm. look a little bit wider. Uh, I know... Um, I think you in particular like using really narrow yes. lead, right? So which there's a, a three sixteenths as well, um, which I considered using for this, but I did not. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So part of it, I think, it's just an aesthetic <laughs> decision when it yeah. comes to the lead, right? I, I mean, it's. I've heard before that people think, oh, the wider the lead, the stronger the panel. I, maybe there's a, a little truth to that, but mm. I, but in reality, it's probably. I think it depends on maybe. Like the size of your pieces a little bit sure um, I see that. because if I had say a, a five foot panel that I'm trying to put together in lead and I have these big long pieces that stretch the whole way and I put this dinky little channel on there it might kind of oh I can see that bit. yeah you could but if there's more kind of holding on to the face of the glass it might not you know move so much I think this thin lead here works pretty well, especially if you see, you know, she's got a couple of pretty small pieces, right? So, I mean, that one's really tiny, but even this piece is pretty small. And again, if the lead was wider, you would just see less of the glass, which, you know, I tell people all the time, I think in stained glass, the point is to see the glass, right? Not yeah. the lead or the solder or whatever. So, so you want to, I guess you're going to show us how to, oh, hey, if you guys have any questions, you know, <laughs> well, I forgot about this part, right? So you can always make a comment in the video section below, or you can send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. And then you can always email us at facebook at delphiglass.com. So, and then we'll answer them, right? It, sometimes we don't answer them like, like that <laughs> second, but we, I think we're pretty good at it. So. We try. Yeah, good. <laughs> so I think Daisy's going to show you how to cut it because there's a couple of different ways of cutting it, right? Uh, yeah, a couple different tools. So take that out of there. I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to recut um, this piece that I already had cut. Um, <clears throat> so. Kind of wavy. All right. So at the top of this line here, you can see that there's kind of a little bit of an angle. So, <clears throat> so if I were to 
um, take a straight cut piece and put it on there. There's a little bit of a gap. So what I'm going to do to make that not do that, I'm going to put that piece there. I'm going to take one of my horseshoe nails and I'm just going to match the like make a mark that's parallel to my um, my zinc. And then take my lead nippers. I'm going to line it up with that line. And I need to make sure that I have a straight cut. So I'm looking for a right angle here and a right angle right here. Just give that a cut. So you can see it's a little bit angled. It's not so straight. Struggle to put yeah, the glass. Yeah, it's tricky to get it in the channel, right? A little bit because the glass is laying flat yeah. to the board. So. So now you can see it. Li it lines up really nicely with that zinc border. So there's no gaps that I'll have to fill later when I go to solder it. Yeah, so one reason why you don't want gaps is, right, it's harder to fill with solder, right? I mean, yes. If the gap's too big, the solder won't really bridge the gap, right? The solder doesn't, won't jump over it. So um, we try to have as uh, few or, or no gaps as possible, right? Is that, yeah. is that fair to say? Yes. This class cool. is So <laughs> one thing I noticed when you were, when you were cutting it is that... Um, you cut the, you didn't cut the face of the cane like I would have thought, right? So, right. You, an example of that, right? Yeah, yeah. So what? So here's the. So again, we were as we talked before. This is the face, right? This is the face of the cane. This is the channel. So when um, when Daisy cut it, she didn't cut here on the face because when you cut on the face, what happens is you crush the lead. So you can see the end how it's all pinched, right? So which makes it kind of a. You, you have to open that up or do something with it. So instead, when Daisy cut it, she cut on the face of the cane. So here, because when you cut, you get a really nice clean cut and it doesn't pinch and squeeze the channel. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, Daisy did really important was, do you see this, how these lead nippers, uh, is that what they're called? Yeah. Is that what they're called? They have it, a flat side. <laughs> yeah, they have a flat side, right? And then this kind of angle side. So the, you always, you want the flat side facing where you want to cut because that's going to give you that nice um, cut. Otherwise, you get, I'll cut this in half and I'll show you what the other end looks like. You get, yeah, more of this. I didn't cut that right, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I cut it right on the face. I was doing that to see if anybody was paying attention. But. <laughs> All right, so when I cut this, the, the side that didn't get cut is always has this kind of pinched mm. sort of beveled look to it, which, you know, might not be bad if you're yeah. trying to fit you it into it. a little spot. But. So that, I trimmed it, and I get kind of this weird little diamond shape. But don't throw any of these away until you're done, because you can use these to fill in your gaps. Mm. So kind of bridge that gap to have your solder kind of not have to jump so much. Right, so then the good news about that is, so you don't have to, I mean, the goal is to try to cut it as accurately <laughs> yeah. as you can, but if you don't cut it perfect, it's not the end of the world, right? I should have left the uh, bottom of that. Oh, was there one that had a nice little gap in I there? I had three little pieces like that to fill it all in. Yeah, you could, you were talking about, you can maybe do one of these, right? So yeah. if you want to show later, you can show, show you how to fill a little gap in real, in a minute. Yeah. But, so, um... Oh, the other thing too is so like when you stretch the lead, right, that you do run the risk of the channel narrowing, right? So getting a little, a little too narrow for glass. So. Yeah, which that's when you might want to use one of these, a uh, FID. Um, so there's your little yeah, piece there. So there's the one that he cut um, that's really pinched. Um, and like he said, you can kind of open that up. This one might go a little too far, but... You can kind of start to see that it's opening. That Might be too small of a piece right there. You <laughs> do a lot with. But even if it's just like, you know, like Daisy was pointing out, so on the table here, Gosh. the um, one of the, the pink glass, I think, is, thick, is <clears throat> thicker than some of the other colors, right? Yes. So, so which often happens, right, in stained glass. So this, this more peacock-colored glass is a little narrower 
So it doesn't fit in the, the pink doesn't fit into the channel as well, but you can just, again, using a fid, you can run it through the channel, open the channel up a little bit just so the glass fits in there a little bit better. I wish it fits in all of these. <laughs> <sighs> or you can use a, um, a ripple, be ripple bit to kind of narrow your... Oh, yeah, like on your, when you're grinding, right? So yep. we, yep, we have some bits that will taper the, the outside edge of the glass, right? So it mm -hmm. slides into the cane a little bit easier. That's perfect yeah. for textured glass. Yeah. Yeah, 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 really. Oh, yeah, what a great idea. Yeah, like heavy great texture, texture glass, ripple so. glass. Um, I've used it for that. But. So what else about cutting? So there's a different tool. Do you have another yeah. tool, right? So um, I have one of these, which is a lead knife. Um, it is kind of sharp. Um, so don't, like... Run, Run your, your finger over it. Yeah. Like it's, oh. <laughs> um, so this, uh, it's kind of like using your lead nippers, but just you have one side of it. So um, the way you use it is a little bit different. So I will go ahead and show that. Um, okay. So remember how I talked about those little scrap pieces? So I'm actually going to use this to measure where I need to cut um, this long piece. Sorry guys, we're back now. We had a little bit of a delay. We had a slow internet connection, so we're back. So Daisy is going to show us how to use the lead knife. Yes. Okay, where I was. Um, so I'm using this little piece here to measure where to cut this. So I'm gonna basically take this edge here and just follow it and mark my lead. And that's the angle I need to cut it at. So if you can see how sharp that angle is, that's <clears throat> kind of hard to um, get those nippers on there and not squish it kind of weird. So that's where the lead knife comes in. To now do what we didn't do, and I'm gonna cut on the face. So I'm gonna line up my lead knife with that mark I made. And just give it a nice push while rocking back and forth, so I don't sit. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. Okay. <laughs> Internet's not so great today. Hi right, guys. Oh, we're back live. All right. On YouTube, it'll all be one video, and I'll link it here on the Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with the lead knife, you can see we do get a little bit of a squish there, so we can just take our fid and kinda make sure that that's open a little bit more. And fit that piece back on there. So is that the flange? Do you know, is there a technical term for these, all this stuff? I think that's what they call it. <laughs> sure. The center, <laughs> the center of the lead is called the heart of the lead. And then, um, as Daisy was mentioning earlier, for the most part, the, the heart is kind of a standard size. But we do sell some leads that have, they, they refer to it as a high heart. And all that means is just taller. So again, if you had some really rippled glass and didn't want to grind it down to bevel it to make it fit in you could uh, or working with some really thick stuff you could use the high heart yeah. but well we don't sell very much of it right there's only um, a couple sizes no. yeah. I think that come in it okay so now that that is cut and I take my little scrap piece that I measured with you can see that that is cut nicely so that if I have my big long piece here it's got a nice angle on it and it's nice and tight no gaps Nice. Well, to so can you talk a little bit then about, um, so uh, I think that was it for cutting, right? Yep. Did we show all that? Yeah. Right. Well, again, if you guys have questions, let us know. But so assembly, right? So I mm -hmm. see that you got these, uh, you made a reference to these horseshoe nails, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you have these little blocks, these that you're using. And so how are you, I'm, I'm assuming all this is pretty important to the Yeah, I mean, it, it makes assembly. it a lot easier. <laughs> so it's like pinning, kind of like pinning your, your yeah. project in place. So um, we use these horseshoe nails uh, because they, you know, can be hammered into this nice board that we have um, pretty easily and get pulled out and you don't have to hammer them in very far because it's strong enough to hold it. So we have these uh, little stops here and you'll see that they kind of have a part that sticks out and then a part that goes in. So the reason for that is the part that sticks out here can go inside your lead channel. But if you don't have your lead cut any, or cut yet um, and you want to still hold your stuff in place, your glass can go in that channel there. 
and still keep everything nice and tight. So the reason that we want to use those is because these nails can very easily go through your lead. So yeah, I know when I was yeah. first learning, you know, that, that we didn't have these fancy little blocks. And, and so we would just use little scraps of lead, right? And so yep. you kind of use that as a, so in place of that. But, it, but the, I'll tell you, these little blocks are really yeah. nice. So. so like he said, you can use like a little scrap piece of lead. So I could put that in kind of like that if I wanted to. And it acts sort of the same way as this stop. It goes right into the channel. I've also seen people do it this way. But it, this is a scrap piece, so it doesn't matter what happens to it. I can stick nails through it all day, and I don't need it. So, yeah. And so we're using horseshoe nails again. I, I, I don't know. The uh, main reason why is because they're flat. Yep. Right? So they're not round like regular nails. And so the, the thinking was that that round, that curved surface could cause some issues if it was if you're doing it up against glass. Because I've seen people do these things without even, you know, without using anything between them. And so the flat part of this would be a little um, easier to, to go up against the lead or the glass if you're doing it. So that's why mm -hmm. we use the horseshoe, horseshoe nails, in case you're wondering. Yeah. And then, so, so basically, if, if you were continuing on, you're just going to, you know, cut this next piece and put the next piece of lead in. You just keep going until yep. you make it to the outside. One thing you might have noticed is that the zinc, this outside zinc frame is longer than what she really needs, right? So... Uh, you'll notice that, that this is longer than what you need, and mainly it's just so you don't have to, because you don't know where this is going to really end up. Right. I mean, you sort of do, but but still, you wait until you get that in before you yeah. before you cut the zinc. Like you is that can true? you can see on my pattern here, like this this piece goes over that black line. So if that starts to happen, I'm not necessarily going to take the time to make every single little thing fit to, exactly to my pattern, as long as everything fits together. I'm okay with that. So this might end up kind of more down here rather than all the way up here. So I'm not going to cut this to the end of my pattern because it there's a good chance it won't end up there. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, it could grow a little bit, which, you know, happens a lot in the stained glass world, right, even in copper foil work. And as long as it's not going in an existing opening, right, as long as yeah. you're not trying to fit your front door or cabinet, then, you know, if it's a little big, it's not a big deal, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I hear you. I would think if you're using, if you're putting it in a window that's an exact size and you need it to fit to that, I would get your zinc cut and maybe even attached like in kind of somewhat of a frame a little bit um, so that you don't ever have the chance to Yeah, grow. your dimensions are already kind of yeah. set. So you, know? you have to take the time to make everything fit in that space rather than hoping that it fits in that space. <laughs> I can tell you another little trick that people will do uh, when you're trying to fit into a very specific size opening is they'll use lead on the outside. Um, and even an H came like, oh, we didn't talk really. We, I mean, I guess we said that. We didn't really talk about it, but right? I mean, yeah. this, this, the lead that, that Daisy's using is referred to as an H came because it looks like sort of, if you see it from the end, right? It looks like the letter H. But so sometimes on the outside, this kind of lead, uh, to fit into a, an existing opening because if it doesn't quite fit, you can always shave the lead down. You mm -hmm. can come in with a you know a utility knife or something to shave some of the lead off so that it fits into the opening better. Because um, you know usually you're going to frame that anyways, or mm -hmm. it's going to get you're not going to see it. But um, hmm. what else? Oh yeah, the old <laughs> shaving the lead thing, right? That's a, that's an old shaving trick, the right? lead trick. The old shaving the lead trick. You don't know that one, Daisy? So. <laughs> I don't know. So, well, we're all learning something new. I learned something new earlier today, right? So <laughs> Daisy just learned something new. So that's great. Um, where else are we? So then so then you just keep working your way out, like I said. And then when you got to this outside edge, which, you know, see Daisy's not quite there, and we're not going to stay here until she finishes it all. So we're, we're going to just keep moving <laughs> on. But then she, you know, you can see she has her other zinc. She would slide these, she would like put this one up, right, and then decide where that's going to go, mark where she needs to cut this lead, slide that, that out, cut it, and mm -hmm. then assemble it that way, right? And then you would do the outside, that, that would yeah. be your panel. Yep. Well, so there, so you're not done though, right? I mean, so I mean, what, oh. I have all the pieces Once everything's out, soldered, just not well, even if you soldered everything, you wouldn't be done, right? Is it? Nope. Well, we, you have to solder, aren't we? I think we're going to, yeah. I think Daisy said you were going to solder a joint or two, right? Yeah. 
Sure. Yep. Sometimes people do it. You know, if, again, if you're if you have really complicated design and things are moving around a little too much, sometimes people will solder, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of anchor things in place, so then you know they're there and they're not going to go anywhere. Um, but I think normally you probably just assemble the whole thing and then yeah. do all the soldering at one time. So my question yeah. for you then is, so you're talking yeah. about sliding out this zinc piece here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you going to solder all your inside pieces together, then slide it out? Or slide it out first, cut everything, and then solder everything? Um, I guess it depends. Hmm. I mean, at this it, point... It, you... it depends on what you want to do, really. Yeah. So um, with, And it might depend a little bit on the size of the piece what would be easiest. Um, I feel like the bigger the piece, the more you might want to maybe solder some of these lead joints a little bit. I think um, you have less r risk of movement. Yeah. Um, whereas with this little panel that I just did, I just kind of pushed everything over a little bit, took my piece out, cut it to size, and then brought it back and pushed everything back into place. But it's only, you know, seven pieces so it, it wasn't that much to get it all to fit back together um, whereas with this I might solder some of these um, lead pieces together before I move anything because I don't want to have to take more time to try and get everything to fit back together the way that I had it when I got everything completed <laughs> that makes sense right so I have yeah. to move everything and do it so I think you're gonna do a couple then, maybe a couple yeah, joints, right? Sure. So, um, so we're working with um, a soldering iron, right? So you're using the Hako. Yes, <clears throat> this is my favorite. Um, one thing about um, soldering lead is it is very soft, so it t doesn't take a whole lot of heat um, to just melt the lead itself, which we don't want. So you want to um, have your iron be a little bit cooler. So with this one, you have this little temperature dial. Um, I usually use it at the 410 setting uh, for doing copper foil. And right now I have it at the 360 setting um, because I don't want to uh, potentially melt through my uh, lead cane. Yeah, that's a tricky part, right? Yeah. So I mean, the, <laughs> the temperature that the lead melts at is almost the same as what the solder does. So. Yeah. I see you're using a 6040 solder, so yep. is that it's your work, favorite? Works yep. for me. Yeah, I know sometimes <laughs> people will use a 5050. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the advantages to a 6040 is it does melt a little easier, so yeah. so you can go in and get out quicker, you know, with the with your iron and not have to hang around and run the risk of you know melting lead. But yes, um, yeah. I know sometimes people use a 5050 because with a little bit higher lead content, they think it matches the lead better, but you know. It's, Oh, which is something I wanted to say earlier, right? I mean, there's there's a million ways of doing stained glass, right? And so, uh, uh, and many different ways of assembling lead cane. This is just kind of the way that we do it here at Delphi. So, um, yep. We're not. So uh, my point of that was we're not saying it's like the perfect, you know, <laughs> you know like you gotta do it exactly like us. Yeah. Okay. So, um, guess you're just gonna flex a couple of these babies. Yeah. Um, I was looking for one that had a, a gap. Yeah, you did it. Nice job. I mean, you, you probably don't want to solder <laughs> yeah. that one. Probably not. I'll, I'll probably do this one because it has a little bit of a, a gap there. Okay. Yeah, so, so you talked about saving like every little scrap, like, yep. I mean, at least I, until I you're have, done. So. Uh, teeny tiny pieces that, you know, would never be used in anything except for what I will show you after I solder a good joint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, show them how to do a normal one, right? Like one that fits well. So you um, got okay. some flux and... Oh, I got some flux. It's all just the same as um, copper foil if you've done any of that or whatever. Um, so I'm going to actually go to one of those. Okay, so I just flexed um, these joints here. This one butts up to um, the zinc border. So um, if you ever have done stained glass before and worked with the zinc border, you know, it takes a little more heat to kind of get the solder to adhere to it, but then the lead doesn't take as much heat. So it's kind of 
yeah, interesting to get those to um, be connected. So what I usually do is I just take some of my solder, and I don't actually touch the um, the lead until the very end. Mm. So I start on the zinc and get that nice and hot so that my solder sticks to it, and then I'm just going to pull it onto my lead. And then I can go back in and kind of smooth that connection there a little bit. But now that is fully soldered, and that piece of lead is connected to my border. Nice. So now this one over here is a lead piece to a lead piece. So it really doesn't take much. And one advantage of doing lead came is you only have to solder at the, the joints where the lead meets another piece of lead. You're not running a full bead of solder like you are with copper foil. So it's a little bit quicker, a little less uh, playing around with you know, molten metal. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I noticed that you were pretty fast. And so the other thing with this hako, this particular <clears throat> soldering iron, is that if you notice, the tip was pretty small, right? It's like a 3 16th inch tip yep. or something. Mm -hmm. And so it does uh, allow you to do a nice, delicate little, you know, bit of solder. As you notice, you know, Daisy wasn't moving the iron around a lot, right? Just go in, put the solder down, come yep. back off. Nice. That was nice. Yeah. Then you can show how to do maybe like a, you said one yeah. that has a little bit of a gap in it. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go to this one right here. And then I'm going to take some of my um, little scrap pieces that I was talking about earlier. So that gap, that piece looks just about right. So that is actually the face of my cane. And all I want is the face of it. So I'm going to take my lead nippers and I'm going to cut that right off of the part of the lead. So now I'm left with a little T and a little rounded piece. So I'm going to use this piece here. I'm just going to... That is some tiny, delicate work. <laughs> Sometimes pliers work really well for Say this. Say tweezers? <laughs> Daisy doesn't even know tweezer issues. I use horseshoe nails sometimes. So I don't need it to look super duper pretty. I'm just bridging that gap right there. So now we all know that there's a stray piece of lead in there. But in a second, nobody will know. So just like I did before. I'm just going to go ahead and cover that up. And now you'd never know that it was there. Our little secret. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, so I was saying earlier, I said that is the nice thing about yep. lead is, again, that it is, it seems real rigid, but it's pretty forgiving. You know I mean? Yeah. Again, if you've got gaps, you can yeah. fix them without having to totally recut the lead or yeah. something. So. The only thing is the, the glass should be cut a little more. I mean, you have a little bit of leeway just because you do have that channel that it's kind of hiding under so the wider your um your the face of your lead the more you can kind of have some oh yeah you could cover it so maybe. if you're a little yeah smaller so, so if you're going with the thinner stuff like i did here your pieces have to be cut pretty precise um because you don't have that much of a face to hide your edges of your glass so yep. They need to be a little bit prettier. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with a, with stained glass patterns, so the black lines on here is what's representing the space that the heart takes up. And so, mm -hmm. um, so when you're cutting your pieces, you have to cut. Your piece should fit inside the black line, yeah. right? It's how there's really the, the way to do that. Not always easy. To do. Yeah, not always. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, I said that like it was easy, right? So, yeah, um, it's not always easy. A lot of these don't fit inside those uh, black lines, but we're making yeah, it work. That's all right. <laughs> it's gonna be good. No one looks, will know again. Looks exactly. nice. So. Um, <laughs> So I said this earlier though, right? So once, I mean, now let, let's pretend you have this all soldered, like you do that little piece, right? And then you're still not done. Too. Before we do that though, Deborah yeah. is asking, is there a way to fix a gap between the glass and the lead cane if the glass is cut too small? No. No. You have to recut your glass. I mean, you could do, you, I guess you could go to, <laughs> Change the pattern. or you you're could go to wider lead, lead, I, I don't guess. Know. You, could, you could go to wider lead. But, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, you don't want a hole, right? There's some void that goes through the window. Uh, 
I mean, originally, you know, if you know, like all like uh, cathedrals and church windows are all done in this technique because these were exterior windows. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the advantages to lead is that you can have it as an exterior. Yeah. Um, and so we need to weatherproof it. And again, if so if there was some kind of a hole in it, that would uh, obviously would kind of defeat <laughs> the purpose, right? So. Okay. You, you, know, only, you can only fix the lead came, not the glass itself. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm going to slide this out of the way. So Daisy made this little piece. I asked her to make this little piece earlier. So she's. Um, oh, yeah, we don't need this anymore. Michelle's asking, are you going to recut the piece that's too long? So this teal one right here. Um, yeah. I won't have to recut it. If anything, I'll just have to trim a little bit off that, that right end there, there or grind it down. Um, it's better to have it too big than too small because I can always go back in and adjust it that way mm -hmm. instead of having to recut the whole piece. Yeah, I think so. you're waiting, right? So I know that sometimes um, when you're assembling lead, uh, you cut the pieces out and you see how the next piece fits before you make a decision, right? So mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to look at that other yeah. piece and then if you need to trim the, yep. the that pale um mean green yeah <laughs> <laughs> like with copper foil you can pretty much cut your pieces and spend your time grinding them and getting them all to fit really nicely like all before you start foiling them but with like lead came you might need to kind of like grind as you go as like through your assembly um because everything might fit super perfectly but then there's one piece that just kind of doesn't quite fit and you need to take maybe make it a little more curved or something like that um, to get everything else to kind of fit in there um, so it's it's a very tedious process but it looks nice so <laughs> Okay. So then, so uh, we do have to, I, I was mentioning earlier that, I mean, one of the advantages to using lead cane, if you if you want to, is that you can use it as an exterior window. And so we need to weatherproof them. So typically, uh, lead panels are cemented or puttied, is how we refer to it. And so Daisy's going to show you how that's done on this little piece that she sheeted earlier. Oof. Oh, I just want to point out real quick. So. You can see this piece, and sometimes, so normally you you know you flex everything and then solder it, right? And usually you have flex all over the place, and and sometimes people don't clean the flex off on lead cane because they think the putty uh, is going to clean that off, get all the flex off, and so they'll just putty it. Um, but I know that a lot of times we still I we, I grabbed the, the cleaner that Daisy used. Yeah. So a lot of times we use this product because it's really nice. Is is that it is a it neutralizes the flux, but you don't have to rinse it off. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason to like take this to a sink or even that big panel, right? And then have to rinse it. So you can just spray this stuff on where the where you soldered it and wipe it off, and that neutralizes the yep. flux. That's what um, I did. So yeah, I know that's why it looks so clean. I'm like, wow, how'd she get yeah, it so clean? Looking? Very uh, kind of shiny. There's no like sticky residue or anything. There's just kind of some paper towel dust. But um, yeah, it's just quick spritz with that, and then just wipe it on both sides and made it nice and shiny. Yep. So we have two different products to do the, um, right, I mean, they, they go by st stained glass putty, stained glass cement, right? I mean, for yeah. the most part, nothing too super complicated. It's kind of hard to read, but this is the cement. <laughs> yeah, I have some, uh, you know, over there, I've got all the, <laughs> the real clean ones, if you want to see what those look like. Yeah, the putty's a little... So <laughs> one of the things that does happen with both products is mm -hmm that they do have a habit sometimes of um, sort of stiffening up, right, as they sit yeah. in the container, you know, on, the, on our shelves or in the warehouse. And then so they, they're not always as, um, a lot of times you have to mix them, which uh, you did it beforehand, on you or remix yeah. this one up. So. This one uh, didn't want to, it's going to take a lot more work on that. So. <laughs> yeah, the it's putty not a lost cause. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, that's the thing to remember <laughs> is that they're not a lost cause. I mean, a lot of times if people get them, or even, like I said, you know, we'll ship them and people open them up and they're like, oh, it's, a, it's rock hard on the bottom and there's all this oil on top. Mm -hmm. You can just, you can mix it back up. Um, what I do often is just turn the whole container over and let it sit yeah. for a few days and that lets the oil soak back down into the, to the putty or the cement. Yeah. And then you have to stir it back up. It's, but it's reasonable, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can yeah. you can uh, add linseed oil back into them as they get dry as they dry up, right? Because they sometimes dry up if you leave the lids off them as you're working with them. And yeah, <laughs> um, you can get yourself a 
small putty knife or something like that and like I could sit here and just kind of cut through this a bunch of times and it'll mix right up um, no problem so or we can add a tiny bit of linseed yep. oil like I said which I don't know if we have any in the building do we? maybe with the miracle one maybe oh yeah but yeah <laughs> But you're going to use the cement because that's yeah. that one's already mixed and ready to go. So, um, yeah, that's a little thinner than me. It's not bad. Yeah, it works. It works. So that what that what we, you have to do is get the cement into all the um, channel, right? So sometimes the, you know, as we mentioned before, the glass doesn't doesn't always fit perfectly into the channel. There's definitely gaps in there. Um, this panel we didn't um, pick up, but I'm sure for you to have, sometimes when you pick them up and they're not puttied, they you rattle. Can, they rattle because the glass is really just loose in there. There's nothing really. I don't know. Those pieces are pretty tight, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> it might not. Daisy does, <laughs> Daisy does a nice, nice job of cutting, so I'm sure it was really, I'm sure there's no rattling going on. Try to avoid using the putty. <laughs> oh. I just cut things really. So now quickly. comes the, the um, tricky part, right? So now you, now you got to get this, like I said, into all the nooks yep. and crannies and into the channel. Okay. So we're just going to take a, like a bris stiff bristle, like scrub brush. Um, and I'm just going to kind of start pushing it into the channel. And it's going to get all over my glass, but we'll clean it off later. So you can see that I was going this direction, and you can see that it's kind of working its way in there, right into that channel. Whereas on that side, that's still nice and open because I haven't gone that direction yet. So I'm just going to continue doing this, going all the different directions to make sure I get some of that cement kind of shoved into that channel. A very messy process. Well, I did notice that you're not wearing any kind of gloves. So, do you normally wear gloves, or are you are you the glove person, or no? I don't normally do this. You know. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it, gloves might be a good idea. I grab but. some just for the fun of it, just to you know, again, to uh, I guess depends, I guess, on how you like to work, right? I mean, if you're trying yeah. to keep, you can see that the the putties have uh, dye in them. That make them black, right? So sometimes that can stain your hands a tiny bit. Or you're working on scrap paper. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We don't work on your. Uh, don't work on a nice table or something. No. It does go all over. It's good to have a nice uh, space to do this at. Even if you do it outside or something, that's. But you still want some sort of. You don't need to do protection. both sides if you want to just do the one side. Yeah. But typically, we would you would putty both sides, yeah. right? So, but. Yeah, but just for time, I think we'll just we'll just do the one side and. So that the cement is getting in there, but then on the other side, you can see that it's, nothing's happening. So I would then flip this over and you know do the same process and everything like that. Just so the um, so the brush again that that uh, Daisy's using is this is what we use here at Delphi is one of these. Uh, brush scrub brushes right but what what helps is it's a natural bristle so again so it's something that's not going to damage the glass at all right so that's what that's what usually we recommend is a natural bristled brush and uh, what we do this is the way they come and we just cut them in half um you know take a little saw and just cut it in half that way i mean sometimes it's unless you're doing a huge panel you probably don't need something this big as you can see it's a little bit easier to control for daisy to control when the brush is a little bit smaller and um it also will give us an opportunity to use one brush here for the cement or the putty, and then we're going to use uh, something else to help clean up, right? It just takes a while to get it in all of the <laughs> crevices. Uh, I bet. <laughs> nice, though. So it also gives kind of a... Um, almost like a patina to the lead. It has a habit of darkening the lead up a little bit, which some people like that look, right? So. So the tricky thing here is gonna be drying time, yes. right? So how long normally does it take, do you know? Um, I think we usually say like 48 hours, you should just let it sit 
um, just like it is. No, not just like it is. I mean, she's going to keep. She's going to clean a little bit more off it. So yeah. it will. The other thing that's going to happen is the 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 putty can kind of ooze out a little bit. So yeah. um, normally tomorrow we would check it again, and if some of it's really gotten bad and oozed out, you would clean that up. And uh, I think I think Daisy's going to show you. Yep. What do you use to clean it? Now, this is whiting powder. Yep. Um, yeah, so now we have all this, and as Daisy pointed out, right, so you got this black <laughs> gunk all over your glass. It's everywhere. So one of the things we're going to use to clean, help clean it up with is yeah. um, Not so <laughs> something called whiting powder, which is still really just uh, ground-up chalk. Yeah, um, it's um, just whiting powder. It's a, like a white powder. <laughs> All right, I think it's so, calcium carbonate. Yes. Is that what like it is? That. I'm just going to sprinkle that on here. So sometimes people use sawdust for this. <laughs> That's another thing. But I, I think the whiting is, I find the whiting is just like so yeah. much easier than sawdust to be honest. So, so you can see that we, uh, this was maybe once one brush um, and it was just cut in half. So. You can kind of cut your brush in half, use one for the cement, one for the whiting powder, so you're not just kind of gunking up a, a brush and making it all. Yeah, all <laughs> the entire brush, right? Yeah. yeah. So same process. You're just going to kind of push that towards the um, inside of the channel like we just did with the cement. And what this is going to do, it's basically going to help with um, any like extra moisture um, that is in the cement or putty that you just put on there. So you can kind of see how it's changing color because it is mixing in with that. So do, like, I'm guessing, like, people probably wear a mask at this point. Would, um, would that, that a might be a good recommendation, idea. perhaps? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, we admit here at sometimes, uh, you know, at... Just push it in away our classrooms, we're not always. Uh, well, our stained glass classrooms have a built-in fan. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> we're not in our classroom, so our normal our stained glass classroom. So, but yeah, you could you know again, it does generate a little bit of dust, so yeah. probably something that we should you know you'd want to wear a mask for. But as I keep going, you'll see that the um, all the gunk that was on the glass mm. is starting to clean off because this whiting powder took the moisture out of it and it just kind of is balling up a little bit so that's you can see how that changed color because it took all the stuff that was on the surface of the glass and it's just kind of removing it yeah it almost looks like it's polishing the glass really when yeah. you kind of look at it it's like kind of like a pumice of some sort that's doing that so it's almost like a a flux remover, but for cement. Yeah. <laughs> Good analogy, I like that. Yeah. Well, that's why I was saying sometimes people, I know a lot uh, on lead, they won't, they don't necessarily always clean the flux off because they figure all this right. does, right? The, the Using the cement or the putty and then using the whiting and that cleans it all off. But but I like the idea of, of getting the flux right. off first. So. so, you can see it's a little bit cleaner. There's still some uh, stuff in here. So, I can see that right in here it's still a little bit wet, so I might take a little bit more of that whiting powder and just kind of focus right in there. But along in here, you can see it's kind of got like a matte finish because um, it's it's starting to you know dry out a little bit. Um, but this is far from done. I'm going to let this sit for probably about 48 hours so, um, to oh. really let it dry out. So do you so do you uh, clean some of this stuff now, or yep. do you wait a little bit? I mean, do you, do you go in with like the do you do this? Or sometimes people will take a dowel and sharpen it like a pencil sharpener, yeah. and then mm -hmm. they'll come in here and they'll do this sort of a thing, and they'll remove some of this excess stuff be yeah. before it gets um, too dried up. I do know that there's you there's a fine line because it yeah. sometimes when it's so wet that that doing mm. this doesn't really help. It just wants to ooze yeah, out a little bit. Yeah, you can kind of push it out of the channel a little yes. bit. Yes. So um, I've just used, like, paper towel a little bit, like, 
oh, yeah, kind of fold yeah. it up to be a little bit stiffer. Um, but just kind of run it along there. I'm not really pressing because I don't want to push that um, cement out of there. Yeah, what I usually do is uh, I will, so, like, I know, uh, like see, Daisy says, it right by here. I just cleaned that up right there, so now it's kind of a nice clean um, line, mm -hmm. but there's still that cement in there. So. And in 48 hours is really when it's going to really stiffen up, and you're probably not going to do much more. I mean, you won't be able to do any major cleaning with it at that point. So a lot of times uh, we'll, um, you know, look at it. Let it sit a bit. I usually just let it go overnight or till the next day, mm -hmm. and then go back in and look and see if there's any spots you miss because it's still usually soft enough that if you have to scrape something out, so um, you can you know especially like in some of these sharp corners, right? That yep. all those kind of V shapes. It's great in here where it's nice and skinny. Yep. Um, you might need to go in with maybe even a, an exacto knife or something like really yeah. pointy to get that get in there and just kind of clean it out a little bit more, but. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, that's it, right? I yeah, mean, that's, that's pretty it. much, you just, you know, a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of time and you can Patience. get it, can look at it pretty nice. Um, I, the only thing I want to talk about real quick, I, want, I meant to say this earlier was, you know, we're working with lead today, obviously, right? And then, so we're also working with the solder that contains lead. And I know that's a concern for people, right? Is uh, getting lead in their bodies. And so mainly, the, the main way we usually get lead in uh, as humans is we ingest it. So we get it inside our mouth somehow. So it becomes a handling issue when you're dealing with lead. So if it once it's, if it's on your hands, you got to just, you know, get it washed off. So I grabbed a couple of products just to show you guys. These are some things that we use around here. What's really nice about the D-Lead soap is it it's um, has an abrasive in it so that it just helps kind of get that off a little bit, especially if you're do working with lead a lot. It kind of gets on your... But I'm going to go use. <laughs> Which is going to use here in a second. And the other is the D-Wipe the D -wipe towels, which are so nice when you just want to wipe your hands off or maybe you want to wipe your tools off that you've been handling with all that lead on it. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of really nice uh, products to be using uh, when you're dealing with lead. Um, otherwise. Might be a reason to use gloves. So <laughs> if you uh, are cautious about that, please use gloves. Yeah, I, yeah, like I brought in the nitro gloves, don't right? Care, so I guess. We, we have those, but sometimes <laughs> we're right over. Let's just do yeah. stuff. So I'll wash my hands. It's fine. Well, I, I'm not sure we have much more, right? Was that's that the process. pretty yeah, good, right? That's that was pretty process. good. And again, if, if you have questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you know, I, you know, you know how to get a hold of us, right? So you can get us on Facebook or Instagram. You give can us a call. give us a call, even. Hey, that works. Yeah. So. Um, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> thanks Daisy for coming along and helping out. Uh, maybe you'll see Val next time. I'm not sure, but um, if you have any suggestions, we're always looking for suggestions for doing uh, these Facebook lives. So uh, we're open for that. But otherwise, maybe we'll be back in a couple of weeks, is what we think. Yeah, we'll see you then.